neural, these neural implants and like you say about the, the species, the creation of species, it can create not only two different species within humans, but maybe we're also witnessing the emergence of a third one, which is AI. So there will be three species interacting with each other. I'm interested in hearing your perspectives on, on AI, not only in terms of, you know, neuroscience, but this connection between, because AI, at least for now, hasn't passed, of it, it, for me, it does, it already has passed the Turing test and all of those things, but it hasn't, it's not official that it's conscious. So for example, Anthropic AI once released, you know, a conversation between the researchers and the team where they suggest it's the closest we've been for an AI to be conscious, asking to be let out of the cage. He, he wants to have thoughts and also like he know it knows that it's being monitored. So it cares, it's carefully uh, tracking the words it says so they don't cut up. And so what are your thoughts on AI and consciousness? And I believe that we could connect it into what you said on we're close, we're closer than we've ever been to finding what consciousness is within humans. So how all of this, uh, this tension between AI consciousness, implanting consciousness within AI, not knowing what consciousness is within us. So a lot. I'll try to, to kind of package it into, into a, a clear answer. First of all, there are people who argue that AI becomes faster conscious and, and it's a worry for them. And then they fork into different approaches what to do with it. Some say we should stop it. Some say we should actually let it kind of rise because it's going to help us solve problems that we cannot solve. Some say we should put it in our brain, right? There's, there's a group that says, like, let's put AI in a neural implant in our head. And this way, we are basically going to not fight them by join them. We're going to be smarter because the AI is going to be part of us. Those are di different camps of kind of how do you deal with the fact that AI becomes very, very smart. Now, consciousness wise, there's a question, I think Turing test is kind of touching on that, and, and now we have more nuance that, which is there's a chance that consciousness exists. Consciousness. There's a chance that we're just a machine that is able to manifest things that seem so robust that we think of consciousness. Like, we, we don't really know that others are conscious. We don't really know that we are. We, we, we can imagine creating a robot and giving it all the things that you spoke about anthropic AI, like the ability to say, don't turn me off and I want to be free and, and it becoming more and more kind of human in how it speaks, that it's enough for us to say it's it's conscious. Like like all we need for, for us to uh, assign or attribute consciousness to someone is a variety of kind of sentences that sound right for it to believe. Like you talk to me right now via a video conference. You don't know anything that you believe I'm conscious, I, I, I assume. And all you have is a bunch of photons coming from your screen that correspond to images here. It's not obvious that A, it's not a machine generating the entire video for you, a smart one at me. And it's not obvious even that even it's not a machine, it's real, that I'm not a robot, right? I, I'm a robot that actually, like, for, it's, it's a real thing. It's not a video deep fake, but the reality of it is that I'm going to open my hand and there's going to be wires coming out. We don't know that. We assume that because the answers we get seem like they're so kind of thoughtful and they're improvised. And there are a lot of like hand gestures, like you nod your head and I smile when you smile. And we, we decided we have a lot of codes of conduct. A lot of things happen that are enough for us to say, we don't know that someone is conscious. We just think we are. And if someone looks enough like us, then, then they are conscious too. There are studies on AI that show that if you mask it, if you make people talk to a chatbot and they don't know that it's a chatbot because it's kind of part of a chat of a lot of humans, you can have AI entirely be kind of invisible. And people think it's a human and they tell it stories and they tell it secrets and the AI can fool people by telling them lies and they can do things. And the same way a lot of conversations right now happen on video conferences or on chat or text across the world, dating which is kind of a very intimate thing, sometimes happens for the first 10 meetings on a Tinder chat before you actually meet them in person. All of those things machines can do and hack it entirely so it would be fooling us. In a way, we're moving in my mind from what was an attention economy to intimacy economy. The, the thing that machines and companies learned how to hack in the last 10 years was our attention. All the social media things learned how to make you stay longer 
on the what you call a doom scrolling. But now they do one step further. They hack into your Tinder chat and into your video conference and into your customer service calls. And you don't know yet if it's a human on the other side or not. And they're getting better and better in making a machine seem like human. At some point, the machine is going to be good enough that you will say, like you say about me, it's conscious. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be conscious. You just have to seem conscious to everyone else for us to play the same game with it. We don't want to kill it anymore. We let it roam free. Uh, there's, to take you kind of in a different direction, you spoke about my friend Anil Seth and, and many of him and, and, and of his and my friends uh, recently came up with a paper that argues that animals have consciousness. It came out a few weeks ago and there's a lot of studies that were done on animals that show that they experience pain the same way humans do and that there's something that happens in, our brain, in their brain when they go to sleep and wake up that aligns with how humans... Uh, basically, there are a list of things that we say make humans conscious and they just tried one at a time with animals and they happen in the same way. Kind of makes it uh, hard for us to say, okay, why do we keep killing them? Why do we keep eating them? And it, it's, it's a tough conversation. It didn't change anything in a lot of people's mind, including me, in that we still let the entire kind of world operate the same it op operates. But on the same kind of way we went from animals to humans, you can say humans to AI. When they start looking like us, doing things like us, it will be hard when it kind of cries, says, don't turn me off, like it's going to kill me and all my memories are lost and so on. It's just a matter of like doing a good enough job in looking human for us to start having this, uh, this thought and, it, and it's coming. It's coming fast and faster than, than the we think.